The United Nations Security Council approved a security mission for Haiti. The mission was drafted by the U.S., supported by 13 members of the Security Council, with China and Russia abstaining. Kenya will lead the multinational force, sending 1,000 security personnel. Despite the U.S. support, no American forces will be part of the mission. The Washington Post obtained a draft resolution of the force's plans and reports it outlines that it, quote, would provide support to Haitian police, including by conducting joint security operations against the gangs and protect critical infrastructure sites such as hospitals and ports. But details like rules of engagement have not been worked out yet. Joining us now is Democratic Congresswoman Sheila Sherfulis McCormick of Florida. She is co-chair of the Haiti Caucus. Congressman, it's great to see you. I thank you for your time. What do you see this mission of force being in Haiti? Well, the goal is going to be to protect the people from the gangs and finally give them relief from the terrorism they've been facing. We get so many reports of um, sexual crimes against women, crimes against children, but also we're seeing more and more kids who are being recruited into gangs. So this security mission is very much needed right now. And what we're hoping to see is that the Haitian people finally get some type of re relief from the terrorism they've been facing. But we're also looking into safeguards. How do we ensure that there are no human rights violations, that the Haitian people feel comfortable with the multinational National, um, security force. So those are the areas that we're seeking. But this um, authorization is truly a win for the Haitian people living in Haiti. And it's really hopeful that they know that help is on the way. We've seen so many Haitian people coming to our um, borders, so many Haitian people also coming to the embassy crying out for help. And we need to respect their self-determination. And this is the first step in actually giving them the help they need. There have been uh, a number of, uh, and you know this better than anybody, there have been in the past a series of international security missions into uh, Haiti for a number of different uh, excuses and reasons. It just seems like, Congressman, you know, Haiti is, is such a vital country. The, 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 the people of Haiti are so extraordinarily uh, productive and, and hardworking and and just generous in so many ways. How, how do we support the people of Haiti? Well, we first start by respecting their self-determination. The two things they've made clear is that, A, they need help fighting the gangs. And the second thing that they've actually made clear is that they do want the de facto president to step down, the Prime Minister Ariel Henry. And there's a transition government that has actually started forming, which has the consensus that's necessary. So if we want to actually be different or do something different from the past where we saw intervention, this security mission is one of the first where we're actually getting input from the Haitian diaspora and where we're actually looking at how do we preclude or prevent any atrocities from further happening, especially the collateral damage that sometimes happens when you do have these types of missions. And I'm so proud that we're actually taking the steps to prevent what we saw in the past by actually engaging the Haitian people, the Haitian diaspora, actually sitting down at the table right now trying to figure out what are the safeguards that we need to have in place, but also talking about how do we move forward? What we're really looking at moving forward is what is a government that will sustain the Haitian people and actually give them a real shot at democracy. But we cannot have this conversation without talking about justice. How are we actually going to hold people accountable who have participated in the terror, who have participated in funding the terror, and make sure that the gangs no longer have a place in Haiti to terrify the people? And how do you, how could that be accomplished, you know? Well, I think the first step is really going to be working with the citizens and the, um, the government that they have there to make sure that Ariel is not present. Um, we've lost all faith in Ariel doing anything to help the Haitian people. Haiti has eroded under his governance. And what we really have to do is give credence to civil society. For the first time, we have civil society and the private sector coming together, saying that they will support a transition government, and we must listen to that. But in addition to that, we have to set up some type of international criminal court in which we will hold them accountable. This will be the first time that Haiti is actually getting real justice. We haven't seen justice in Haiti when it came to the previous coups. We haven't seen any justice when it came to the oligarch families that are supporting this terror. And it's now that for us to change that direction and trajectory of Haiti and to actually give it a fighting chance. And that is going to have to be with the participation of the Haitian diaspora. And that's going to be have to be with the participation of the international community. But more so, the voices of the Haitian people have to be heard. And we start right here today by respecting their self-determination and respecting their first acts, which is help to fight the gangs. And the second ask is to make sure that there's a transition government that does not have Prime Minister Ariel Henry.